Don't be hearers only, but be doers of the word. Because hearing only, you deceive your own self. How many know we want to stay free from any lie, any deception, any delusion? Would you just say, thank you, Lord, that they are keys, that you keep me, you keep my house, you keep us, your family, and I thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 through 20, you don't have to turn there. I just, if you're going to take notes, you could reference that. The Lord said, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. If you be willing and you be obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. If you be willing and if you be obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. How many know sometimes the Lord has to work in us some willingness? And then how many know then there's a step where the Lord has to work in some obedience? And he said, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bibles, if you would turn with me to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. The Lord put this on my heart several weeks ago. And sometimes as the Lord begins to put things on your heart as, as a minister, uh, it's, it's not just that he puts something on your heart, but it's when he wants you to minister it, teach it, when, when there's a release for it. And I believe today is, is that day. We learn to follow the Lord. How many say, I'm learning? I'm learning. Every day I get up and we're learning to follow the Lord and stay with him. Acts chapter 8. We're going to begin reading at verse 4. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was not, he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their, they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money, that th thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. How many know we see the gifts of the Spirit operating here? Not something that he could naturally know, not something he's walking and all of a sudden the gifts of the Spirit begin to operate and he sees something that is going on in this man's heart. He sees something that's going on and he knows it's not by the Spirit of God. He said, Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness and pray, God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. 
Then answered Simon and said, Pray you to the Lord for me, that none of these things which you have spoken come upon me. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. Whew, boy, there's a lot in that. <laughs> That's a lot going on. You see, when God, he saw a city. How many know he doesn't just see an individual? He doesn't just see a family. He sees cities. He sees parts of the country and God has an assignment and he has assignments for you and for I and for people, for his family and he's calling those that do not know him. So we see that there was a persecution that had come into the church and the church was scattered because of the persecution that was taking place. And then we see that the Lord assigned Philip. He went down preaching in Samaria, but Samaria was under the hold of the devil. Now, how many know there's a spiritual atmosphere, a spiritual environment, a spiritual condition in everything? There's a spiritual condition in every person. There's a spiritual condition in every family. There's a spiritual condition in every business. There's a spiritual condition in any church. There's a spirit. And how many know none of us have arrived? And how many know we're all seeking after the Lord and we're walking and we're following him and we're saying to the Lord, Lord, I ask you to keep me free. I ask you to keep me where I'm free from anything that does not come from you. Anything that is not born of the Holy Spirit, Lord, I don't want it in my life and I ask you to help me stay in tune with you to be able to walk with you no matter what comes, what goes, to stay in alignment and agreement with you. The book of Acts, when you begin to see Acts, you could really say Acts of the Holy Ghost. You begin to see the church birth, the church born, the church going forth, and you begin to see the Holy Ghost working with people, and they're learning to follow the Lord and do things His way. Not their way, not the religious way, their, their, the way of the Lord. The way of the Holy Ghost as they're learning to be led by the Lord. The Lord on the inside. They had saw him on the outside, but they're learning to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and to follow him and to listen to him. And they're being inner guided, not outward led. Now, how many know there's a lot in that? Because when we learn to hear from the Lord, he's not speaking to our head. He's speaking to our heart. And then he gets everything to us and he's, we are learning to be led by him, to follow him. But how many know if we do not learn the voice of the Holy Spirit and we do not learn to be in tune with him and stay in step with the Lord, the devil will assign many, many things to try to take us away from the Lord. This is what we see going on in the city of Samaria. There was a lot going on that was not God and the whole city was bewitched. And they were bewitched by somebody that was enamored with power. They were bewitched with somebody that wanted power at any cost. Power no matter the cost. They just wanted power so they were dabbling in the occult type things. They were dabbling in witchcraft. They were dabbling because they just wanted power and the devil was using somebody to hold a whole city. But how many know one man, one man, God assigned and said, go tell them and let me lead you and tell them what I'm going to tell you to tell them and I'm going to start setting them free. How many know it just takes one, it just takes one man, one daddy, one husband, one husband, one mama, one mother, one grandmother. Just takes one person that'll say, I'll hear you, Lord. And then we start walking with him and he'll free whatever is under the bondage of the devil. We just have to be in tune with him to hear him and walk in the anointing and release the anointing. But we don't want anything that is not the anointing of God. We don't want anything that doesn't come from the Holy Ghost. We don't want anything that makes us feel good, but makes him feel bad. We don't want anything that lifts us up, but doesn't bring him the glory. We don't want anything that makes our flesh feel better, but grieves the Holy Spirit. We want to make sure whatever we're doing, it is the Holy Ghost and the family of God, the creation of God is coming to the Lord, being set free by the power of God. And everybody knows Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father.
Amen? And every one of us have an opportunity in our lives as we're called of the Lord, those that belong to the Lord, to preach in our little world that he gives us. So I feel like there's a lot of little things here that the Lord has pointed out to me that we can look at today if we just kind of look into some teaching in the Word of God that I believe is applicable to our lives. Somebody say amen. amen. In Matthew chapter 28 verse 16, Matthew chapter 28 verse 16, we begin to see in Acts the church walking in the power of God and the gifts of the Spirit Philip is preaching, the works of God are going forth, people have been healed, delivered, set free. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 16, then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, all power, all power, all power. Don't be enamored with anything that is power outside of me. All power, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe the all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. He's talking to them. He's teaching them. He's educating them spiritually with their mission, their assignment. In Mark chapter 16, verse 14, you choose to believe, keep this thought, you choose to believe or you can choose not to believe. It's a choice we make. When we leave here after service, we choose where we want to eat. We choose, are we going to have a hamburger or are we going to have a sit-down meal? We, there's choices we make and the power of the will is a very powerful thing. As a matter of fact, it's the greatest thing God gave us was the power of the will. You can will to do His will or you can will against Him. And it's an understanding that the Lord has to give us and teach us the power of the human will. Mark 16 verse 14. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and he upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said to them, Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The power of the human will. And when the Lord appeared to them, because he had sent others to, him, to them to tell them we saw him, we heard him. But they said, because we've not saw it, because we've not heard it, we don't believe it. And how many know he's educating the ones he chose and loved because they still had a whole lot to learn? Somebody say, I've still got a whole lot to learn. We'll be learning until we're with the Lord and for all eternity we'll be learning. Amen. They had a lot to learn in what he was calling them to do and where they were going to go. And how many know it was going to require humility to stay humble before the Lord to say Lord teach me Lord show me so he upbraided them with their unbelief that they were in we won't believe he had sent those to them to say we saw him they said we don't believe it they could have believed it because he got on to them and scolded them over their unbelief and began to teach them about it and why they got there and then I want you to notice their unbelief developed something on the inside of them called hardness of heart. So the minute we choose not to believe him, there's a layer of hardness begins to develop in the heart. And the more we don't believe him in a certain area, the harder that heart can get. To the point, have you ever talked to somebody and you say, Lord, why does it seem like they're so blind in that area? 
when we don't believe, he upbraided them with their hardness of heart because they were in unbelief and it was hardening their heart more and more. They were sitting in that. How many know we choose to believe God? And when we choose not to believe him, there's something that goes on in the heart. And they were stuck in that condition. So loving them was correcting them. Loving them was bringing discipline to them. Loving them was educating them to turn them out of the wrong and into the right so they would then be able to go out and teach other people exactly what he taught them. Can somebody see this? The Lord teaches us and what do we teach our kids? We teach our grandkids, we teach our friends, we teach our neighbors, we teach whoever the Lord puts us in front of. But if we're not learning it individually at home, we don't have anything to teach. The Lord is working with me and he's working with you and he's working with us in our everyday life, in everything we do. And he's teaching us to believe him and to keep our heart open to him and tender to him and pure before him and trainable before him. Because if we become hearers only and not doers, we become religious and not relational and people don't want that. People need Jesus. And Jesus brings the answers to whatever the human heart needs. Only Jesus can fill the longing of the soul. If you want to see something growing, you want to see your marriage change, you want to see the kids change, you want to see the business change, we want to see church change, start talking about Jesus. The more you talk about Jesus and he's high and lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. But when we're not talking about Jesus and we're not lifting up Jesus, he can't be drawing everybody to him. How many know we got issues, we work through issues as we lift up Jesus and the anointing will destroy the yoke, it'll lift the burden, it'll break the bondage, the captive will be set free, blind eyes will open, the deaf will hear, the lame will walk, the power of God was moving in the book of Acts and people just had to get in line. Amen? Somebody say, Lord, thank you. Thank you that you're using me. And I want you to use me greater and greater. And stay in line with him. Stay in agreement with him. Stay under the flow. But how many know there's a whole lot of stuff tries to come in to distract us and to get us away from him because life really does demand pressure. And the devil uses all kinds of things to try to get us looking away from the Lord and outside of the Lord. So the power of the human will... We choose to believe. The Lord began to deal with that situation and straighten it out. If you would turn to Acts chapter 6, verse 1, we'll deal with some kingdom stuff and some worldly stuff and see the difference in those. Acts chapter 6, begin reading at verse 1. And in those days when the number of the disciples multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews. Can you believe in church people begin to murmur? Surely not. <laughs> they begin to complain. They begin to gripe. Surely not. Yes, it did. Because how many know anytime you have people, you have the human condition? Anytime, anywhere where there's people, God's people, there's the human condition. And notice what's going on. Because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. So there were some things that needed to be, be dealt with and straightened out. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look you out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, who we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip. Well, we just read about Philip, didn't we? So we begin to see how God orchestrates, how he ordains, how he orders. The church was moving forward. The church was progressing. The church was moving with the Holy Spirit. And the Lord was moving them. And they said there's a lot of work to be done, so we need some people to start doing the work. And they called them people of wisdom and full of the Holy Ghost. 
so that they could go out and start doing the work of the Lord and order began to come forth into the church to meet the needs of the people. And they laid their hands on them. And they went out and started doing the work. And Philip, as the persecution came, went preaching. And God was setting the city free. And people were coming to the Lord. They were being baptized. And the devil was being exposed. But the devil was planted hidden. To try to discourage and ultimately try to break down and destroy the work. How many know demons will hide? And Philip thought everything was great. But the Lord said up here in Jerusalem, there's some things that I want to do in Samaria. And the Lord had the church begin to move and Peter and John was sent down. And Peter and John went down and Peter began to minister about the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And as he began to minister about the baptism in the Holy Ghost, as he's preaching things a little bit, because Philip had not touched that yet. So you could say a little bit deeper. And so he's starting to go into the things Peter is that the Lord's told him to do. Just like Philip was doing the things that the Lord told him to do. And so when Peter comes down and begins to minister, then how many know the Bible says Simon also believed and was baptized and was following Philip around. And so when, when Peter gets down there and John and they begin to minister, Simon's walking around and you would think he's a believer. You would think he's right in the middle of everything going on and the Holy Ghost says to Peter, I want you to speak to him. And the Lord began to expose some things that was going on with Simon that was in his heart. And he was enamored with power. And he was enamored with influence. And how many know this is the same deal Judas got hung up in? Judas saw the power of God. He walked with Jesus. He saw the power of God. But this power over here, that Rome and the power of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and all of this stuff that looks so powerful that man holds, Judas was caught between two worlds. And so he thought he could dabble over here and not ever really commit to the Lord. And he would walk back over here and stay buddy-buddy with the world because he liked that power and he liked that influence and he liked the way all of that made him feel. But how many know the Lord had prepared him a table over here that all he had to do was come and learn to follow him and walk with him and Judas could have had every good thing that God had for him. But he was over here and he loved this power of what the flesh feels good in. And how many know the high road and the low seat will always, always have humility in place to bow before the Lord and say, Lord, we seek to do this your way, not any other way. So Judas got caught between two and he ended up selling the Lord out. And he ended up going and buying him some land and he thought it was all going to be okay. But he didn't know the day was coming that the final decision was made. And then the powers of hell that he had played with was going to come upon him and overtake him. And he couldn't get away from those demons because you don't get away. Hell is forever and ever and ever. And the powers of darkness, you don't get free from them lest he whom the Son is set free, you get set free indeed. And it's not a game to play. We're talking about eternity, heaven and hell. And Judas got caught between two worlds playing games. And he couldn't get rid of them demons that came after him. And he took the money and he threw it thinking he could try to get away. And he went out and hung himself and just tried to get rid of all of it. And still didn't come and bow before the Lord. Simon's in a situation where he is sitting in something that the Lord is having to deal with something so a city's free. How many know there may be things going on in your house that the Lord says, I want to show you because it's trying to tie stuff up? There may be things going on on the job and you say, Lord, what is it? And the Lord said, I'll show you and show you exactly how to start praying about it because it's trying to tie things up. It's trying to hold things in bondage that I want free. 
How many know the Lord wants his people free? He wants us free. He wants our marriages free. He wants our children free. He wants our grandchildren free. He wants our homes free. He wants our churches free. He wants our businesses free. He wants us to be free. He came so we could be free indeed. But how many know he's teaching us and he's showing us some things how to stay free and give the devil no place? Because we don't want anything from the devil having any part or lot in anything that God's give us. So we understand we've got this term, we all say we're all the same. Well, we are all the same in the sense that God loves us all, but how many know in the world everybody's not the same? A garbage collector is not an attorney. You get a garbage collector doing attorney work and an attorney being the garbage collector, we're all in trouble. You get somebody who Googles medical information and they think they're smarter than the doctor and you get the doctor saying, well, I'm not a doctor and he's Googling medical. How many know we're in trouble? How many know when you get daddy not knowing he's daddy and trying to be mama and mama trying to be dad? How many know the house gets in trouble? How many know anything that gets out of order with God, you have trouble? So God is a God of authority and order and structure and boundaries and rules and how we do things with him and he teaches us and if it gets out of alignment, he corrects it because he loves us and he wants us. That's why he then told parents, you teach those kids. Scooter, I love you, but we're not having a conversation about that right now. Well, why do I have to do it? Because I said so. Now, we may talk about that later, but as of now, because I'm daddy and you're not, I reserve the right to say we're going to do that now because I said so. We don't have to talk about everything for 45 minutes because talking about everything for 45 minutes, the world may tell you it's okay, but God gives instruction in his word. There is an authority and there is an order and there is a structure and there are boundaries and they're godly and they're holy. And if you don't learn how to walk in them, you won't make it. So when the Lord appeared to the disciples and he starts talking to them, he's dealing with things in their heart that he's having to get lined up so they could be used by him more perfectly. The first form of government that the Lord implemented was individual government, self-government. Adam, Adam, self-government. Walk with me and I'm going to show you some stuff. There are the animals. What, what, what's the name? Oh, Adam, it's not good that man be alone, but I'll make him a helpmate. Put him to sleep here, here. He, Family government. Second form of government. government. Family government. You're going to have a family. The fall came. Third form of civil government. The fall came and everything's out of order. So I'm going to give silver gut civil government because it's better than anarchy even if people don't do what they're supposed to. Fourth government. Church government. I've put you a salt and light in the world and I'm calling you to pray for those in authority. Because they may be functioning without wisdom, but I want you to pray for them that they'll have wisdom because I'm trying to help my creation get back to me. So the church, we have a place. We have a place. How many know you have a place? How many know daddies? God needs us. How many know husbands? God needs us. How many know wives? God needs us. Mothers? God needs us. How many know all that's in him? I was telling somebody the other night after such a wonderful marriage class and I said one thing that the Lord's taught me through time is the Lord can teach us men to speak woman. I speak English. I don't speak Spanish. If I had to learn Spanish, I'd have to learn it. Well, when I come to the Lord and said, Lord, I don't understand her. He don't look and say, I don't get her either. You're kind of on your own with this one. Woman, I mean, I know. I mean, no man, woman, and we're all wrapped up in him. So when I come to the Lord, I say, Lord, help me to speak woman. He says, I know her. I created her. I know everything about her. And then a man, he looks and he says to a wife, let me help you speak man. How many know there's an answer for everything in the Lord? But how many know the world over here, if we're trying to do it without him, there's no answer to solve these problems. And so the problems that ail the human condition, it can never be met outside of him. That's why we all have to watch out for and avoid and say, Lord, keep any chains of religion off of me. 
Anything that holds me and binds me that is not pure and authentic and genuine that would hold me back and hold you out, Lord, help me stay free. Amen. So when, for instance, we go home after church and we get settled in for after lunch and say the house is a little bit in disorder and I say okay honey I'll take the vacuum she says okay well I've got the dishes and the kids said well we're getting our bedrooms and then one says well we've got the yard to pick up I'll run out there how many know we're all just kind of doing our thing and it's just beautiful and wonderful and it's order but how many know if people don't know their places and daddy's arguing with mama well I thought you'd already had this house cleaned up but now we'll all work just like you well I blah 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 and the woman and the kids nobody how many know that house can be disorder it's not heaven on earth it could be no order, no authority, no structure. So how many know knowing where we're supposed to be walking with God and communicating and staying in our lane and humbling ourselves before the Lord brings his sweet peace and presence and the order of God and keeps the power of God flowing? How many know that works the same thing in business? How many know that works the same thing in ministry? It works the same everywhere when we understand our Lord, our God, is a God of authority and order and structure and boundaries and communication and how we have to talk and work and walk with Him to keep His power flowing in our lives. Because how many know the anointing will destroy the yoke? It'll lift the burden. It'll break the bondage. I don't care what we're facing today, what's going on. It's not bigger than God. The Lord is the answer. He's got his word for the matter. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I think that's pretty good. Say, I think God's word is really good. Turn, if you would, to James chapter 3. James chapter 3. Anywhere we begin to see when we see disorder, disarray, confusion, conflict, issues in our life. How many are having some of those? You say, that's just kind of part of life. I'm having some issues, some conf different things that I'm dealing with. There's something the Lord wants us to remember as we walk through, as we work through keeping our eyes on him, keep, keeping our heart with him, staying focused in him, no matter whether we feel like we're on the mountaintop or no matter if we feel like we're in the valley. How many know he's with us both places? And anywhere in between, he's with us. He's walking with us. He's showing us. He's helping us. And there is an answer. But how many know whatever the condition, whatever the situation, wherever we're at, the Lord does want us to locate ourselves with him to make sure we're in alignment with him, that we're in agreement with him, and that we're working with him as he's working with us. So we're not found to be working against him. Amen, somebody. So how many know in everything we do, we have to make sure we're in alignment with the word of God. We've got to make sure we're in alignment with the written word of God. That what I'm doing, I could then stand before the elders of the church, my wife, my kids, my family, the world, and said and say, this is why I walk the way I do. This is the chapter and the verse. I'm building my life on God's word, not my thinking. Not my thoughts, not my ideas, not somebody else's. Because how many know the devil can get in there and lead us astray and lead us away from the word and we have no anchoring in our lives and it seems like things are just floating away. But how many know there's a simple answer if you say that's the way I feel today? Get anchored in the word. Wherever we're at, whatever the situation, whatever the problem, just get anchored right there with the Lord. Look into the Lord, get anchored in the word. Because how many know his word will hold? And he never fails. And what he asks of us, believe me. Believe me and walk with corresponding action. Amen. James chapter 3, 
verse 13. Who is a wise man endued and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual. What's that next word? Devilish. Not from heaven, from hell. Devilish. And it invites devils. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated. That word in the Greek literally means, in part, you can talk to it. Have you ever talked with somebody and you talked to them and you could talk? You could work it out. Have you ever talked to somebody else and they just said, nah, nah, you're wrong, you're wrong, nah, nah, nah. you can't talk to it. That's not the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God you can talk to because God, how many know he's helping us? And he's helping us figure things out and he's helping us get through. He helps us. So the wisdom that is from above, easy to be entreated in part means you can talk to it. Full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Tell somebody, if you would, just look at them and say, you just need to get settled. That's all. No matter what's going on, no matter what's happening, no matter where you're at in life, you just need to get settled. Have you, have you ever had things happen in your life and you say, I've been through some stuff? And you say, well, I've, just, I've been through some stuff. I've been going through some stuff. And I know the Lord is with me. But I've been through some stuff and, and if I was just being just completely frank with you, I'd tell you it's shaken me. And there's a lot, it seems like, from here and there and everywhere. And how many know no matter where you ever find yourself, all you have to do is say, Lord, help me get settled. Just, just help me get settled. In other words, help me see to make sure my believing's right. That I'm in line with you, in agreement with you. That I'm anchored in your word. And that I'm walking in alignment with you to the best I know how as we walk through this. Because Lord, I believe you that you're bringing me to the other side. I believe that you're working me through this situation. Teaching me and making me a blessing to help others. But Lord, your word will never fail and I'm anchored in you and your word. Amen. So sometime we just need to get settled. To have confusion... When we have issues in life, we know the Lord is not the author of confusion. So the Lord wants us to come out of confusion. So then that means there is a word, there is an answer, there is a place where God says, I'll bring you out of that confusion, but it's in me. It's not in what you see going on around you. So you have to be able to take your eyes off everything going on around you. Because how many of the know the devil would like to put on a show? And he'll like to try to get you looking at anything and everything. And the Lord says, I want you to learn to look through eyes of faith. I want you to learn to move not by feelings, but by your faith. As you're anchored in the word of God. And I want you to not be moved by feelings, but I want you to learn to move feelings. Because how many know feelings are lie to you? How many know fe feelings, they come, they go. They may be right, wrong. They're just kind of hanging out being groovy. We live by faith and we'll bring feelings in alignment as we get established in the Lord. But if we're led by feelings and we cuddle feelings and we cozy up with feelings, how many know you'll always be unstable? Because feelings, there's no stability. But in the life of faith, walking with God, he'll keep us stable. Jesus said, boys, I want to borrow your boat. He, they said, well, he said, cast it out. He, he's in a rocky boat, but he's preaching a stable gospel to the people. How many know as long as we're with Jesus, we'll stay stable? Staying in his word, we'll stay stable. 
But we have to take our eyes off of everything else around us. We're not called to obey our feelings. We're called to obey God. Amen. Somebody say, that's good. Say, that's good. How many say, I feel like, truly, I'm on my way somewhere. God's doing something in me. God's doing something in my family. God's doing something in people's lives. I see it. I sense it by the Holy Ghost. I'm going somewhere. God is doing something. Let me believe that. How many know when God starts doing something, the devil will always try to do something? Because he's trying anything he can do to move us from what God is doing. I mean, no, that's why the Lord teaches us, I want you to grow up in me. I want you to grow up in me. And as we grow up in him, how I many know as we grow in him, we're better able to see what God is doing. Amen. And stay connected with him and not anything that's outside of him. How many know when you get connected to him I was in a part of a pastor's meeting one time and there were some people I really wanted to know for my own self for my own benefit just spending some time with them and I had come out from being with the Lord through a, a, a consecrated time of my life and in time with the Lord and I was so excited about getting together with these certain people and start talking and spending time and when I come and I all of a sudden I started being bothered because they were just talking about things that meant nothing. And I was wanting to talk about some things that meant things with the Lord. Things that was, and so then it even got worse. They were talking about other preachers. And then talking about other churches and talking about, and the next thing, you know, I just felt like I was wilting on the inside. And how many know I just had to make a decision? I just backed out of that conversation. Because if I want to be right with the Lord and walk with Him, that means there's some things over here that the world's enamored with, not judging and pointing fingers at other people, but saying, for me, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. How many know there's going to be some decisions that you have to make for you and your family as you walk with the Lord to stay connected and in line with the Lord, even if it costs you some friendships? And I was walking, fixing to go to church and I was walking up a hill that took us into church and the Lord spoke to me because I'd made some decisions to walk with the Lord. Love everybody, but I'm not going to be part of anything that's not Jesus as best I know how to stay out of it. Because people are not healed there. They're not delivered there. They're not set free there. How many join with me and say, I want that to be my life. And I was walking up that hill fixing to go into church and the Lord spoke to me because my decision as I'd worked through that with the Lord. He said, you can be right with me forever and wrong with people for a minute or you can be right with people for a minute and wrong with me forever. And how many know that's a place that you and I have to come to? My eyes, I'm going to keep them on Jesus. I want to stay in line with the Lord. I want to stay anchored in his word. And I want the power of God in my life that people see Jesus. How many know there could be people in your family that God is saying you're going to be the difference maker for them? You're praying because maybe they don't know how to pray. Your witness and your example because maybe they don't know exactly what they believe. But they're seeing Jesus through your life and mine. And the Lord is drawing them to him. Would you stand please? Would you say these three words with me? Seek Him, hear Him, and obey Him. Seek Him, hear Him, 
and obey Him. How many say right now in your life, you say, I feel like I need a key to my breakthrough. How many feel like you're breaking through something? Or there's something to break through? In other words, there's a hindrance. There's, a, there's something there. And we need a breakthrough. To break through. How many know every place where we need a breakthrough? Individually, our families, our lives. The Lord says there's always a key. And how many know He gives from Him to us wisdom? A key to success, a strategy to walk through this thing, to get through this thing, glorify God, get to the other side, and see the good things of the Lord. Would you lift your hands and would you just begin to praise the Lord and thank Him and open your heart and whatever it is that you've got that you're presenting before the Lord today. Whatever situation, whatever circumstance, whatever issue, whatever problem, whatever uncertainty, Whatever place of confusion, he's the friend that sticks closer than a brother. The only person, constant, permanent, and without waiver, that is qualified to be completely content with you all the time is the Holy Ghost. And he's with us. Everyone that walks and calls and lives the children of God, the sweet Holy Spirit, He's with us. And would you ask Him just for a minute, Lord, I need that key. I need that key. Just like naturally if somebody was giving me a key and it gave me access to something. I'm asking you for the key to this breakthrough. I'm asking you for a key, the key, to get out of this confusion. The key to get out of this issue, this situation. The key to see myself walking through it and how to do that as I look to you and trust you to move me from here to there. From this to that. Father, in the name of Jesus, we look to you today, Lord. And I pray, Lord, in every need, in every problem, in every situation, in every place of uncertainty, every place of insecurity, every place of pain, every place of struggle, every place of conflict, every place that one finds themselves in today, I pray, Lord, that as we look to you, that you would meet every need right now. We come in agreement together as your family. And we pray and agree together that you would meet every need. And as everyone calls upon you, Father, the key to the breakthrough, to the success, to the strategy, I pray that you would grant it to us now. And I pray, precious Holy Spirit, Father, by the sweet wind of your Spirit, I pray you would bring hope. And I pray you would bring joy. And I pray you would bring peace. As we move from here today, Lord, as we go through the week, in every place where the devil would rear his head, I pray that there would be wisdom and that there would be strategy that you would keep us in alignment with you to keep gaining ground. Keep taking back ground that the enemy has taken from us. How many would say, if you would look at me, I want to ask you a question and I want you to really how many would say in my life I believe this is not a doubt or an unbelief statement I just believe it's truth and reality I believe the enemy's been able to take some ground that belongs to me I believe the enemy has been able to get in and take some ground that belongs to me how many now set your heart to agree and say Lord I'm going to take that ground back 
I'm going to take that ground back. Give him a hand clap. Give him a hand praise. Say, Lord, I'm going to take that ground back. In your name and for your glory, I'm going to take that land back. Say that with me if you would. Lord, I'm going to take that land back. I'm going to take that land back. I'm going to take that place back. I'm going to take that back that you've given to me. How many would agree with me and say, Lord, and I'm asking you to do for me in six months, if you tarry your coming, it what I failed to be able to do in the last 10 years. How many will be bold in your faith and ask the Lord with me that very prayer? Lord, I'm asking you to do for me. If you tarry your coming in the next six months, what I've not been able to get done that I know you want to do in, the le in, the, in 10 years, I've not accomplished it. How many know He's promised us by His Word He redeems the time and He restores the years. He's a restorer. He's a restorer and He will restore the years. How many say, I've got some years. I'm believing the Lord to restore to me some years that the devil come in and he, he was able to tear down and hinder. But how many say, Lord, I'm asking you right now as my restorer to restore the years. Restore the years. Would you put your hands on the person right next to you and say, Lord, would you restore the years to them? Say, Lord, would you restore the years to them? Lord, would you restore the years and redeem the time? Lord, we agree together and we're believing you today that we're taking back ground that the enemy has taken. And Lord, we're believing you together by faith today that you're going to increase us and multiply us supernaturally for your namesake, for your glory, for your honor, and that we see the good in the land of the living. In Jesus' name. One more time, would you just say to the Lord, restore everything. Restore everything. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you would, give the Lord a great big hand clap and blessing.